Hey everybody, Terry White here, and I'm here to show you my favorite new things in Lightroom for 2023, April that is, 2023. Let's go ahead and dive in. So the updates just dropped, and I'm going to show you, um, first few things are basically both in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. Some people like to refer to that version as Lightroom Cloud, but that's the other version of Lightroom. Let's go ahead and dive into Lightroom Classic first, and we will uh, get over to Lightroom Classic, or I'm sorry, Lightroom Desktop as soon as we can. So first and foremost, I've got a problem here with this photo. This photo was shot in uh, existing light, and it was unfortunately shot at a very high ISO of 11,400. So as you might imagine, zoomed out looks okay, but zoomed in, Let's go ahead and hold down our command key and zoom into it. And we can see what we expect to see, and that is noise when you start to shoot at high ISO. Luckily, there's a new way to fix that, brand new AI-based noise reduction here in Lightroom and Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. So I'm gonna hit detail, and there, the brand new AI-based noise reduction is called Denoise. If you want, you can still get to the manual older noise reduction. We haven't removed it. We just put it down there in its own little area. So now when I click Denoise, that'll bring up the same enhanced preview, the one that you're used to using for uh, super resolution. And that will allow me to see the preview of what I would get. Now I've got it set on 80. It, it falls to 50, you can go all the way up to 100. It can really start to see what it's gonna do, but I'm gonna drop it down to, as I always like to use as little as I can get away with. So somewhere around 80 will be enough for me. And it says it's gonna take 20 seconds because the AI has to figure out what to do to make this image better. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Enhance and let it do it. And I can see the progress bar up top, uh, cranking through the image and what it's gonna do is create a new image from it. So first and foremost, in this current release in both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop, the AI-based noise reduction is um, only, it only works with raw files because it's going to also create a new raw file. The, or the team is also looking at possibly making it work with JPEGs, but for right now, only works on your raw files. So here is my after. There is my before. You can really see the difference. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And let's see that, and that's um, before and after. Just a really big difference in noise reduction. So expect your noise reduction to be a lot better um, than it used to be. So especially in areas where there's text, that's the after. And if I get out of this and show you the before in the text, there we go, that's the before. So before, after, Big, 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 big difference. And you can still sharpen it. You can still add texture. You can still do all the things you would normally do to make it look even sharper and better now, but it got rid of the noise. And that's a big new thing for Lightroom on desktop. Next up, let's head over to people masking. So people masking just continues to get better. We've added two new masks to people masking. So for example, if I were to go ahead and select uh, this gentleman here, I know him, and he's got kind of a white beard going on. And if he wanted to make his beard a little darker, we could go into our develop menu now. We can go to AI-based masking. It's detecting the people in the image. There's only one person. And so now if I were to go in and click on this one person, I now have two new masks, facial hair and then clothes. We'll get to clothes in a second. So let's go ahead and click facial hair and create a new mask for that. And we're just gonna go ahead and rename that mask, facial, facial hair, there we go. And now we've got the facial hair selected because it could be a mustache, beard, or both. Uh, in this case, it's both. We can make whatever adjustments we want to make. So, for example, I could go in and I could bring down the exposure of that of that facial hair. I could bring down the, um, the highlights in that hair to kind of darken it up. But I'm going to jump out of that. Two new things we also have. Number one, we have adaptive presets. So there's an adaptive preset for darkened beard. So I can see the before and after, it's not really a big difference, but it's there. And we also have um, one called Enhanced Clothes. So those are under your adaptive presets and those are also available now on mobile as well. Uh, but the other big new thing is not so much the adaptive presets for me. For me, the big new thing is when I have the facial hair selected, we've now added curves to your selective adjustments. So um, now if I wanted to just go ahead and drop the curves down in this image, I can do that and I can bring down the highlights. And this is just, I, you know, I've never been a big fan of curves, 
but this just really changed my mind and made me a bigger fan of curves. Now having this as a local adjustment because it just makes the darkening of his facial hair look more realistic. Now I gotta go do his regular hair as well, which, which actually that's cool because I can actually add that as a separate mask because we have the ability for people to select hair already. So I'd go back to select people and then I would go ahead and select him and then I would go ahead and create one for his hair. And that will select his hair and then I will go ahead and do the same thing. But anyway, let's move on because that's not new. Uh, let's move on to this one and let's talk about clothes. So um, you've seen me use this image before. It's a stock image and I've always tried to select this guy's shirt, which is kind of difficult behind her arm, behind her hand. Usually it takes me one or two tries to get it right. But now this has gotten a lot easier. If I head over to develop and I head over to mask, and I go into um, each person, so person one, two, and three. If I go to person one, and I now select clothes. Just that easily, I can create a mask for the clothes, and I can also go ahead and name that mask clothes or shirt one, because he's guy number one. Shirt one, and now that I've done that, I can easily quickly change the color of his shirt to whatever I want, because it's been perfectly selected for me using the new AI. AI is good. All right, so now we got our AI there selecting the uh, clothes. And I just want to point this out while, while I have this open is that when you go down in your history, uh, another new feature is that uh, your mask names are now represented in the history. So if you name your mask and you make changes, you'll see those masks named in your history. All right, uh, another cosmetic kind of thing. If I head down here in the panels, these switches for the panels have been converted from eye, or switches to eyes. So, because people kind of know the eye means hide it or show it. But if you like the switches, you can hold down your option or alt key and the switches come back. But you got eyes there as well. So, just another uh, quick cosmetic change. Now, another big one for me is uh, editing in Photoshop. Two new things there. Number one, uh, if I go to my settings, I can now happily uh, choose which version of Photoshop I may happen to have on my computer that when I say edit in Photoshop, it uses. So some people have multiple versions of Photoshop because they have older versions installed to work with older plugins that may not exist anymore, or may not have been updated so they can still use them. And I sometimes use pre-release versions or beta versions that aren't available yet. And I don't want it to accidentally open in the beta when I when I don't want to show the beta. <laughs> All right, so there you are. All right, uh, so just being able to choose which version uh, it opens in. Another new thing, and this is uh, I'll just show this real quickly that you can do it. So if you select multiple photos, for example, or here, better yet, let's select the ones that are the same person. So if I select uh, these three photos and I right click and I say edit in. Well, we can always edit those in Photoshop and it would open up three separate windows for each photo. We can also uh, edit those as smart objects in Photoshop and it would open up three smart object windows. But now you, when you say open as smart objects layers in Photoshop, it will actually put all three files in one document with as multiple layers. So each one will be a smart object layer. So that is new and that is a big boost for people that do compositing and they want to do it non-destructively as smart objects. All right, so those are the things in both versions of the desktops, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom, um, Lightroom. So let's head over to Lightroom and let's talk about what's new here, especially starting with video. So I've got a video clip here that I shot in Iceland, uh, this particular clip uh, is a drone uh, shot and it's one that I've done shown this before, but I've got some new enhancements I can do to it. Number one, when I go over to the develops, develop settings, I can now choose auto. So that's cool. I can have it auto adjust. That's just, I do auto and photo. So now I'm glad I can do that in auto. So some enhancements there. Also the ability to quickly do black and white. And so if I want to adjust the black and white, I can uh, for the video. And this is great when you're trying to show maybe something that's aged uh, in video, you have that quickly to do it to match your photos as well. So I'm going to undo both of those because the big new thing also is cropping, which is really trimming for video. We had trimming before, but it was it was all manual. You just had to drag the ends to make it kind of be what you need it. Now you can be very specific and very precise. So if I want to start at the five second mark, I can just type in 
five seconds. And if I wanted to end at the 20 second mark or 25 second mark, I can do that. So now my trim has happened to be exactly what I needed it to be very precisely. And it shows me the duration is now 20 seconds because maybe I need a clip that's only 20 seconds long. So I can pick and choose what part of the video I want to be the 20 seconds. Now, of course, I can export that video out. That's now the new 20 second version. But two new things have happened as well as I have the ability to uh, not only go to a particular part of the video, let's do that. Uh, let's say right there, I like that part. I now have the ability to export that out as a separate frame. So make a still image of this part of the video. Great, and that will export it out and I can save it to my hard drive and use it wherever I want. Maybe as a thumbnail for the video. But I also have the ability if I right click on it to save a video frame. So that's kind of extracting the video frame and that will put it in the same album as the video. So here's the video down here in the film strip and now here's the new still that I can do whatever I want. It maintains the same adjustments and it's just a still ready to go. Um, and if I were to go look at the uh, still for this one, it is a JPEG. So it makes it a JPEG. I was, people were curious, hey, is it gonna make it a raw file? Nope, it makes it a JPEG and that's the JPEG still for the video. All right, uh, one of the other things that's new and that is the ability to, um, to make the same adjustment to multiple photos. Ha ha ha, that's not new. But people never know that it's there in Lightroom because it's different in Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic. So for example, let's say I go into this photo, I go into the editing for this photo, and I go in and I make some changes. So I hit auto, and I crank up the exposure, and I really overexpose. I'm just doing that so we can visually see the difference. All right, so now that I've done that, those adjustments, I can now come down to this new interface that says copy edit settings. Before you could just go up to edit and copy, but if you didn't know you could do that, you would never think to do it. So now copy edit settings plus a little gear to pick and choose which settings I want copied, including the crop, including healing, including the auto settings. So I can go ahead and do that. And then when I click copy, I can now select the other photos and choose paste edit settings. And that will paste those edit settings to the video. Um, in this case, it did the auto, uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back here, let's clear the clipboard, go in here, let's not do the auto settings. <laughs> let's copy it as is. And now apply that because I don't want the auto settings to overwrite what I did with the exposure. There we go. So that's giving me the exposure that I wanted. And that just gave me, taught me a quick lesson about copying auto settings. That's probably why it's off by default. And of course, uh, since that setting will still be on the clipboard, any other photo I select will be pasted with that setting. So when you wanna clear that from the clipboard, just hit the letter X. And that will now be, there's nothing on the clipboard, so I can copy new settings and paste them to multiple photos. All right, um, another quick one is that if you are uh, in a particular photo, for example, this noisy flower, um, now you have the ability to quickly and easily adjust the size of your film strip. So cool, film strip resizing is now come made its way into Lightroom on desktop. And uh, last but not least, it's kind of, I've done it already, but you notice when I hover over the tools, it doesn't tell me what they are. It doesn't give me an animation, doesn't do any of that stuff because I turned that off because now in the preferences, you can turn off your, uh, for your interface, you can turn off enable animated hover tips. And while I'm here in the settings, I might as well cover this as well. In the technology previews, you've got a brand new technology preview for exporting your content credentials in the metadata of your file. So this is a big new thing Adobe's been doing, especially with AI and Firefly and all the things we're working on, is we want, as this file travels across the web and across everything else, that it keeps the credentials in it for who created it and what's been done to it. Has, has it been edited? Has it been adjusted? What's been done to it? With what pro program? So we're starting that process. Um, we've already done it in Photoshop. Now we're bringing that over to Lightroom as well. So you can choose to export your content credentials. Once you turn on that technology preview, um, that will give you the ability to do that when you choose export. All right, so I'm gonna hit done. And next up, let's talk about just quickly, I'm just gonna mention these on Lightroom on iOS and Android. Lightroom iOS gets the same adaptive presets we saw for uh, facial hair and clothing. It also gets the video black and white. Lightroom on Android gets the same adaptive presets we saw for clothing and um, 
oh, I didn't really show you the one for clothing, but here it is. Uh, clothing adaptive preset. And that is when we go in to the premium presets, the adaptive portrait. This is on Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. You have the ability to enhance clothes so you can see the before and after. Their clothes look kind of are washed a little bit. Now we can enhance them and kind of bring back some of that color. We can even crank up that enhancement as well. So basically that preset plus darken uh, facial hair or darken beard, I should say. Darkened beard is also a preset that is um, kind of doing more than the beard, but there it is. Darkened beard is an adaptive preset. And both of those have made their way onto Lightroom on mobile. All right, um, last new big feature that I'm happy to show you, and that is if we head over to Lightroom on web. So if I go to Lightroom on web and I go to, for example, this photo, I double click on it and then I get into the now keep in mind I'm in the web browser I'm at lightroom.adobe.com in my browser I go into editing which we could do before what's new is masking and using uh, we're starting to bring over the uh, AI based masking for web as well so if I choose select sky that will select the sky for this photo and then I can go ahead and for example bring make it more blue and make it uh, a little darker and I can do those things using the the uh, AI based masking that we started with a couple years ago in Lightroom on desktop. So those are my favorite new things. Hope you like them. Hope you go play with them right away. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.